Think about your own grandparents. Back in the day, people were a lot more self-reliant. They knew how to take care of themselves and their loved ones, just like my grandfather did. Many from their generation would probably scoff at how modern people immediately run to the doctor for every small cut and bruise which can easily be fixed at home, or how much we pay for health care we don't really need. Today, I want to show you some common sense ways to manage most health conditions from the comfort of your own home. I'm talking about simple things like relieving pain, stopping a wound from bleeding, applying a stitch, managing blood pressure and blood sugar, calming down a racing heart, keeping your memory in great shape and clearing an infection, boosting your immunity, controlling stress levels, and many, many more. When I was a boy, my mother wouldn't take me to see a doctor for every small scratch I got playing in the park. If I fell and hurt my knees, she wouldn't sue the park like some modern folks do. People back in the day were a lot more responsible. They lived in the real world. Today, we've become increasingly disconnected from it, and we stand to pay the ultimate price for this folly when the system fails. But this forgotten wisdom is not only reserved for dark times. These methods are nothing fancy, but they will probably save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars on unnecessary doctor's appointments over the next few years. It will also make you less dependent on a vulnerable medical system. We never know what the future holds, and what we find normal today, like going to the pharmacy or hospital, might be gone tomorrow. Please listen carefully to this free advice as one day it may help you or someone you love. I've recently got in, in touch with a frontline doctor working in a country that's been dealing with hardship and shortages for years and has yet to recover. The truth is, if you want to see what happens during hard times, all you have to do is look at Venezuela. No electricity, no running water, no law, no antibiotics, no painkillers, no anesthetics, no insulin, no nothing. But if you want to find out how you can still manage in a desperate situation like this, you must also look to Venezuela and learn from the handful of people who cope despite widespread medical shortages of every kind. Dr. Maybell is one of them. She's a general surgeon at Caracas University Hospital. People over there had to discover new ways to take care of their own health care once pharmacies ran dry and, and, and hospitals overflowed with patients. In this short presentation, I'll show you three things I've learned from her that will help you take care of yourself and your family during dark times and may help you slash some medical costs starting today. Each one is important, but the third one is absolutely astonishing. I would have never thought about it and guessed how effective it is. Hi, my name is Claude Davis. I'm an old-fashioned guy who some people like to call a prepper, but I'm not one of those folks you see on TV preparing for a zombie apocalypse. I do prepare for an uncertain future, but I like to do it as our grandparents did, when nearly every household canned food for winter, saved rainwater and wooden barrels, and grew natural remedies in their own backyard. The first of the three things I want to share with you is probably hard to believe, that when everything is still okay in our country, but the simple truth is that once society starts to break down, going to a hospital can be a very bad idea. In the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, a lot of people were left without a home, food, electricity, or running water. But some still had all these things because they had prepared for such an event. My friend Tom was one of them. He had at least three months' worth of food and water and a brand new generator that could power his entire home. Because Tom thought he had everything he needed at home, and because his house was on high ground, he decided to stay and weather out the storm. During the hurricane, a small wooden splinter flew inside through a broken window and pierced his hand. It was just a tiny wound. It wasn't really deep, and he thought he could manage it at home. He bandaged the wound with what he still had in his first aid kit and went to sleep that night. A few days later, he woke up in a cold sweat. His finger was pulsating, and he could tell an infection was taking hold. What you want to do in this kind of situation, other than disinfecting the wound, is to immediately take some antibiotics. Unfortunately, Tom didn't have any stockpiled because, as you know, they require a prescription. In a minute, I'll show you a way around that, but which people in Venezuela discovered after they ran out of antibiotics. Over the next couple of days, Tom's situation went from bad to worse. 